High School Football on WCIA 3. Football is everything. Hey, hey, let's go. This is Shaw Lutz Friday Football Fever. Can I get a hut hut? Hut hut. What up? Friday Football Fever back. Brett Barron's alongside Andy Olson. New theme music, high school football. We're ready to roll. How about you? I'm ready to roll. All One right. more season. Let's go. The heat can't keep us down as teams are forced to punt original kickoff times back to comply with the wet bulb readings. We're all wet bulb experts now after this week. Now, what exactly does that all mean? I have no idea. We're still trying to figure it out. Kevin's here. Maybe he can give us a little bit of information on that. But football was played tonight despite the wet bulb readings. Despite the severe weather, we are ready to roll in our spotlight game of the week between Unity and Prairie Central. An 8 o'clock start on the turf in Tolono between these two Illini Prairie Conference teams. First offensive play for PC and a handoff to Hudson Alt. He breaks the pack. He is heading towards the end zone, and he gets it. We sped it up for your viewing pleasure. He's not really that fast, although he's faster than both Looks Andy and I fast. combined. Unity retaliates. Dane Eisenmenger finds Aiden Porter. He's gone for a nearly 60-yard touchdown. Also sped up for your viewing pleasure. Rockets take the lead 7-6. Still in the first quarter and some more fireworks. Eisenmenger quick throw to Porter once again. Another tutty there. 14-6 Rockets just the start for them. Now to the second. Eisenmenger this time to Eric Meback. Fights his way through. He gets into the end zone 21 to 6 at that point, and the Rockets win it 27 to 12. Let's go right back out to Tolono WCIA 3's Bryce Beeman in the gym now because it's pouring outside, Bryce. All right, so all the heat. I know at 5 and 6 you are out yeah. there sweating. We had rain. How did you do it tonight? How did these players do it tonight, Bryce? Brett, it's been a whirlwind of weather. I'm in the gym right now. Who would have thought I'd be in a gymnasium week one of Friday football fever? But here we are it, from anything from the heat, almost not even playing a game to now storming and actually canceling the game a little bit early. But Unity comes home with the win with such a big lead there at 27 to 12. But the fans and the players told me it was so fun playing and all the elements of weather. And I'll let Scott Hamilton, Unity head coach, tell you a little bit more about what that experience was like. Crazy, huh? Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen it go from that to whatever happened out there, you know, like that. It, it's crazy because we had to prepare a whole different way, getting ready for all through the week. We had to change our practice schedules and all that. And then halftime, we think it's going to be, I think we're going to be out dry, and then it starts pouring down. And with, we love that type of stuff. So when it started pouring, we all got, we all got a little boost, and then we were able to close it out. And after they closed it out, they were dancing in the rain, Brett. They were having the best time just dancing along in the rain and enjoying it. They said they actually thrive in the rain a little bit more when I was talking to the players. But I guess we'll see week two. They, they're they up against St. Joe. We'll see if there's rain or sun or overheat. Who knows at this <laughs> point? Hey, it's football. And I made it straight dry, though. I was in the car. So I was able to kind of skedaddle in the car before it got too wet. So that was a big question all the players were asking me. They're like, how did you stay dry? And I was like, I, I beat the system. But <laughs> hey, reporting in Tolono, I'm Bryce Beamett. WCIA 3 Sports. All right, Bryce, thanks so much. <laughs> Another good IPC matchup in St. Joe, who will get those Rockets next week. They take on Monticello tonight. Big first half for the Spartans. Logan Smith on the goal line calls his own number, battles and gets it. SJO up six at that point after the blocked PAT. Now making defensive plays. Luke Teschke overthrows his man. It's Rowan Musselman making the pick. He gives Sparty the ball back. Only for a single play. Smith rolls out in a lame duck pass thrown and intercepted by the big man. Number 99, Ryan Frazee. Huninger's has interception as Monticello scores on the ensuing drive. Maroons with ball back. However, Smith again takes a hit, runs it in. Now wanting to show off the arm a little bit later in the quarter, airing it out to Tanner Seams. The junior makes a great grab. And this one paused in the middle of the third quarter for that lightning delay with SJO 
video update. We'll have a lot of that tonight. Pause games until tomorrow. Final IPC game we've got for you tonight. Paxton Buckley Lota making the long trip to Illinois Valley Central. Chillicothe, hello. And here's Connor Vaughn with a deep completion to Caden Vance for the Panthers. They would score on that drive to make it 16 to 8. Later on, IVC responds. The ghost, Brady Ward for the touchdown. They don't get the two point conversion, so still down two. Before the end of the first half, Vaughn finds Vance again. This time right in front of our camera. It was 24 to 14 at the half. That's the latest score we have there from tonight. Tuscola starts off its season in a neutral site game, playing Bruce St. Bede at Illinois Wesleyan University. We start in the first quarter. We highlighted him in our Friday football fever kickoff special. Jordan Quinn's heads off to Austin Cummings. He just barely makes the goal line, taking a big hit to give Tuscola the score. Now on the kickoff, Tuscola returning this one. Cummings once again had to get it off the bounce, has some blockers in front of him, makes some moves, breaks some tackles, and there he goes. He takes the kickoff back for the touchdown. But after a delay, we have a little bit of a switch up here, Brett. They did delay. Now they're going again as Tuscola leads 25-20, this one in the fourth quarter. Whole lot of those delays coming at you tonight. Mohamed Seymour opens up its season at Morton in a non-conference showdown and a rematch from a playoff game a couple of years ago. A great first drive for the Bulldogs, Lucas Dyer. His first year as the starting quarterback, the screen pass to Braden Pagel for a short game. A couple plays later, Dyer going over the middle. Raymond Long, a long catch for him. For the first down, it leads to a Luke Johnson touchdown. Bulldogs fall, though. This one goes right down to the end, 20-14. to 14. Morton, a winner. In the Vermilion Valley, Westville makes the short trip to Salt Fork as the Storm looking to defend home turf in this one. Tigers with the ball. It's Drew Wichtowski. Taking the high snap, calms himself, though, as he finds Lincoln Cravens near the sideline to get the first down gain. Now on the goal line, keeper for Wichtowski hurdles a man and then uses the truck stick to get into the end zone for the score for the Tigers. The storm fight back, though. Jamison Remley rolling out, and he finds his receiver in the back corner of the end zone. Tigers, rubber get the win in this one as they get the entire game in, 21-14, the final. We wrap up our first block with a little Lincoln Prairie play. Arthur Love Atwood Hammond at Argena Oriana tonight. The skies were beautiful early on. Pick it up first quarter. Long run here for the Knights. Landon Waldrop and he fumbles. Bombers pick it up going the other way. Tyson Tenen with the recovery. ALAH defense stepping up though. Chris Coons putting the pressure on the Bombers. He comes up with the sack to pin them deep and after a punt Knights looking to score and they do just that. Jace Parsons first ALH study of the season. This one 6-0 in the second quarter. They're postponed until tomorrow. Picking this one up at 11 a.m. All right, Andy. Woo. Block. How about that for this yeah. season? Whole lot of stuff going on there. More games to come. We're not done yet. Yeah, we're taking trips around the heart of Illinois Conference and Central State. Eight plus Big 12 play has Central looking to get its season started on the right foot. But the Maroons have a tough first test. And all that and more coming up next.